Today, the Accent on Air talks with Bishop Malesic about body, mind, and spirit and their impact on overall wellness. Then, the Catholic Church on the front lines of the opioid epidemic, the local response to a national crisis. Up next, the path to better health starts with the first step, or the first pedal. I'm Jordan Wyko, along for the ride with priests in their healthy habits. And then, growing faith and building character in our Catholic schools. Coming up, we'll show you today's investments in tomorrow's leaders. Welcome to the Accent on Air. I'm Jennifer Mealy. Today, we begin with spiritual health and wellness. Our church teaches us that our beliefs can help us through difficult times of illness, grief, and depression. Here now is Bishop Malesic, a one-on-one -on -one interview about the importance of spirituality to our overall wellness. Bishop Malesic, today we're talking about spiritual health and wellness. How important do you think it is to have a healthy spirit in terms of overall wellness? I think it's absolutely important, especially when we understand who we are as human beings. We're not just a body. And so many people are focused on taking care of their bodies, and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But then they have to focus, too. I think we all have to focus on the other part of who we are as human beings, and that's the spirit, the soul, um, the, that part that's not visible to us, but, but animates us and, and makes us enjoy life and makes us love, allows us to love. That Those things, that, that invisible part, the, the soul, the spirit that relates us to God, we have to nourish that as much as we nourish our bodies. I think I've heard you say before, it's almost like a cleanse, right? But this is something that you need to do for the soul. We absolutely need to cleanse our soul. Um, I often think of the little sins that we commit, like specks of dust that get on top of a, a, a coffee table. You don't see it right away, but eventually if you let that dust accumulate, you can write things on the top of the coffee table. So you need to clean it. Just like you need to cleanse the body, we need to cleanse the soul. You know, the church is on the front lines of healthy souls. Um, good work being done, I would say. I find that a community uh, that gathers together and has faith and has hope and has the blessing of God is um, a great way to, to help others, especially those um, who might have addictions. That's something that's really near and dear to your heart. Tell me about that. It is. Um, we're in the midst and have been in the midst of a terrible crisis for many years. Uh, people have come up to me and said, Bishop, pray for my son, my daughter, my family needs help. And I'll ask why, and they'll say they're they're addicted to opioids or some other drug, could be alcohol. But I think that it's it's the church's duty to look at um, problems of today, you know, problems of, of addiction, uh, problems that hurt people in any way, uh, whether here or abroad. It, it afflicts their soul too. Their addiction, their bodily affliction, afflicts their souls too. Mm. Spiritual health, physical health but there is also a component of mental health in our diocese that is very, very important. Sure. How many people come to you suffering because of a family member or friend who is also afflicted with mental illness? Yeah. I think people who suffer from mental illness are, are oftentimes people who are embarrassed to ask for help. Um, they sometimes think it's their fault when it absolutely is not. And uh, luckily in the diocese, we do have counseling services to help uh, people with some of those issues, or we know where to refer people. There's a lot of help in our community, and we need to make sure that these people get the help that they need and the support and our prayers. The mission of a disciple can be difficult, but a healthy body can endure. Next, inspiring priests and their healthy habits. Why is maintaining a healthy lifestyle good for your mind, body, and soul? Well, I think that um, it's important for us to be spiritually strong. And to be spiritually strong helps us also to be physically strong and psychologically strong. So they're also connected. Mm -hmm. I think we discover that as uh, people who take seriously the spiritual life, there's an awareness that if your spiritual life isn't where it needs to be, everything else about your life is also uh, thrown off. And I, I find the same is true in maintaining a healthy lifestyle. So whenever I was ordained, it was then that I decided that I needed something to help create that balance in life. And so I took on running. It was a wonderful thing to do at the end of the day to relieve the stress. It's a great time to reflect on scripture because there's no distractions. So I think that's very important that when we do exercise that we really focus on it and utilize that time. What's your like best time? Uh, just recently my best time this year was uh, 8 minute and 24 second mile. But we'll see what we can do today. Mm. See if we can... Uh... A whole mile? <laughs> I don't know. Would you encourage people to get active? Absolutely. 
Yeah, we so often talk about like the journey of faith. Well, the journey is always a step or a pedal or taking the, the first uh, movement. And uh, you don't have to bicycle for miles. You can just kind of enjoy a, a day down the trail for a half a mile and come back. And we kind of have an unwritten rule not to talk work, but still it's uh, when you're out there, uh, sometimes the spirit moves you to kind of say, hey, well, I was having this uh, concern or thought, what are you thinking about this? And yeah, I mean, it's, it's an opportunity, I think, to regroup. Uh, yeah, yeah. and to, to realize that, okay, we can get through this together. Sure, you know? sure. Do you guys often have conversations while you're biking? Do you not bike hard enough? Or is it just like out of breath? Like you're not out of breath? <laughs> oh, no, if you're biking that hard, I mean, on, on the trail, I, I think that's not sustainable. I mean, we certainly can do that, but that's, I don't yeah. think that's the spirit in which we- Are you bragging? No, my God, <laughs> bragging? No, no, we're humble, humble. So what did we go, 300 was, miles last week? Exactly, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a light week. Yeah, exactly. One thing I always say is, when you're thinking about going for a run, to me the hardest part is not the run itself, but putting on your shoes. Right? Just that, uh, that moment of just making that commitment to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's a lot of things that can carry over from our athletic abilities and our prayer life. Right? If we are a good athlete, we have a lot of good things in place, a lot of good habits, a lot of good development. So mm -hmm. I think that's why it's also important for that balance to exist in our life, because we can use that uh, to to become truly the best person God's calling us to be. Coming up, staying close to God in times of struggle, how a grim diagnosis actually made this man's faith grow stronger. Then mental health first aid. We're missing a uh, trauma-informed approach. Why the organizer of Rise Westmoreland says counseling is so important for survivors of trauma and how Catholic Charities is stepping in to help. Let's make it easier for you to manage your money or send it to people you know with Zelle. Let's give you an on-off switch for your debit card and live support at your ATM. Let's get started online or at your local First National Bank branch. Adelphi is a great place to build career skills. While working in Adelphi, you'll learn how to work with people, manage youth behaviors, and develop communication skills while receiving valuable training and professional development that can advance your career. Adelphi has programs in over 30 counties in Pennsylvania, including residential group homes, foster and adoptive care, education services, and in-home treatment options. If you'd like to be the difference in a child's life, apply today at adelphi.org or call 724-804-7117. Even right now, I'm a senior graduating in college, like out of St. Vincent, I want to do my four years here again. That's how, that's how much I love this place. I've like had so many experiences and I've met so many wonderful people here and I'm just so thankful that they've like helped me grow into who I am now. St. Vincent's just a place where if you're here, you're just magnetized toward positivity and openness and kindness to people. It's just what happens and that's why, I mean, that's what a home is. So that's why St. Vincent's my home. The Stony Brook Foundation provides a variety of equine services to individuals who may have cognitive, emotional, physical disabilities, PTSD, and other challenges in their lives. We are a PATH International Premier Accredited Facility in Southwestern Pennsylvania, providing nearly 1,500 therapeutic riding lessons annually. With the help of our donors, fundraisers, and grants, we are able to keep lessons affordable. To apply today or learn more, visit thestonybrookfoundation.org. Let's get started. Whether it's on your first account or your second location, let's put smart technology in your hand and smarter people by your side. Let's get started online or at your local First National Bank branch. Following Christ does not make us exempt from struggles. Scripture is filled with his greatest followers overcoming some of life's greatest battles. In our next story, the struggle is a life-threatening brain tumor, striking a man in the prime of his life and in the midst of his faith journey. Here's Mary Siemens. Michael Walker is a 60-year-old finance executive from Lake Trobe. Until last year, he was at the top of his game, a booming business, a growing family, and the ability to do amazing things, including organizing the first ever men's conference for the Diocese of Greensburg with 600 in attendance. He was a man on a journey of faith who was suddenly stopped in his tracks. More than one physician has described to me, oh, you have the bad one. A tumor in the brain for which there's no cure will statistically uh, take one's life typically within 18 months. So you asked about faith in a difficult time. The priest had heard the confession and make this remark to him, I don't understand how anyone could be a martyr. How could they do this? And his answer was, 
Well, I don't think that it just happens all of a sudden. I think that each day they grow a little closer to God and the next a little bit more to the point where on the day they wake up that their life will be taken. The most natural thing for them to do is to surrender their life. That's what happens. You grow a little closer to God each day and where the most natural thing that I could do is trust Him. So my faith rests in God. My trust is with Him. I believe Him. There are moments of doubt. There are clearly moments of um, where I'll break down and cry because, you know, it's not an easy thing to be told. You'll die soon. Spending time with his grandchildren, his three sons, and his wife is now a priority. Because I am to do what every husband and father is to do. I'm to continue to do it. Provide, protect, and uh, most, as, most especially as I tell them spiritually, I'd like us to go to church together. I want to go as a family. It's important to me. It sends a message to me, to them, and witness to everyone else. They see another family come together to worship. That's actually what we're supposed to do. So the lesson that God is allowing me to learn is savor the moment. I would share that with my children, with you. We're all trying to be at another moment. We're all trying to be at that place we would have called success. And uh, no, no, success is in this very, the, the, the little moment. Um, you know, the moment that your child gives you a big hug. So in the difficult time, there are so many blessings. It actually allows me to tell our Lord, I love you, I trust you, I believe you. Without it, I, I don't have that gift. For The Accent On Air, I'm Mary Siemens. As Director of Visual Communications, I find myself behind the camera quite a bit inside the Catholic schools of the Diocese of Greensburg. I've had the opportunity to watch many unique learning experiences. The impact of the faith-based curriculum is inspiring and empowering. And it starts from the very beginning. What's it, what's it mean to be healthy? I'm washing your hands. And what else? Washing your teeth. And what else? Eating healthy. Well, what do you eat when you eat healthy? Fruits and vegetables. Is a hot dog healthy? Uh -huh. No. Well, Arletta says yes. You say no. What about pizza? No. Yeah. What's, what's it mean to be healthy inside your heart? Pray. What else? Um, fold your hands. You fold your hands here? Are you loud? Are you quiet? Quiet. These experiences are helping to shape young minds. You can schedule a tour at a school near you or register for a fall open house online. I'm very excited to see how the investment in today's Catholic school student will pay dividends for tomorrow's church. The official Diocese of Greensburg guide to Catholic schools, like Geibel, is easy to find. Check out theaccentonline.org. Hi, I'm Monsignor Michael Bagali, and today I'm going to show you how to make a healthy choice tuna ceviche. We have fresh sashimi grade tuna that we'll be cutting into smaller slices. And as the slices are cut and prepared, they will absorb the marinade of the olive oil, the lime juice, and the spices that we're preparing. This is a very healthy dish and especially a good dish for summer because everything is fresh. I found this recipe once when I was preparing a dinner for St. Anne Home that I had auctioned off as part of their fundraising event every year, Harvest for Haiti. Once the tuna and the avocado are in the bowl, then we'll be mixing the marinade, which will then be poured over the tuna and avocado. Next, we'll take some freshly squeezed lime juice, olive oil. This olive oil is a very bold olive oil. It comes from chili. Some ginger, garlic, 
And we're going to add a little bit of jalapeno pepper. And we're only going to use a half of the jalapeno. And then we'll add this to the mixture and stir it up. It's important to have a healthy lifestyle because as we grow older, our bodies need healthy food. There's an old saying, you are what you eat. And unfortunately, if we eat only processed foods, it can have an impact upon our lives. Once it's on the plate, we'll add a little bit of cracked pepper, Himalayan sea salt. So as we're focusing on a healthy lifestyle with this issue of accent on the air, this is a perfect dish for us to be made. Mmm, delicious. Tastes like another bite. Coming up, this St. Vincent coach made national news for what he did during the Boston Marathon. It's a story good for the heart and the soul. Then, the Catholic Church on the front lines of the opioid epidemic. Coming up, the Accent on Air visits the Catholic community of Connellsville as they reach out to families impacted by addiction. Ford Business Machines technicians are never satisfied with anything less than perfection. Which is better, one or two? They take the time to fully understand the scope of the issue and make it crystal clear that you will be able to view your documents at a level that you should expect. Now which is better? That's the one right there. Don't settle for less when it comes to your company's image. Call today for a well-defined analysis of your current picture. It's time to visit a Catholic school in the Diocese of Greensburg because it's time for your student to shine. Students can talk openly about faith in a caring environment where preparing for tomorrow's challenges is today's priority. Many students receive financial aid, making it more affordable than you might think. It's time to visit dioceseofgreensburg.org to find a Catholic school near you. For a list of open houses, visit dioceseofgreensburg.org. It's time for your student to shine. If you end up in a courtroom like this, most likely you have a serious legal problem. Whether it be for an accident, an injury claim, or a criminal charge such as DUI, you better have a great trial lawyer on your side. Ron McCoskey has been a trial lawyer for over 40 years. Along with his son, Matthew, they provide a one-two punch for their clients. If you've been injured or charged with a criminal offense, call us because we can help. Call McCoskey and Associates. You need them on your side. Do you want to improve your health naturally? Align Chiropractic Wellness Center is the place for you. Chiropractic care is more than just making the pain disappear. It's about learning, understanding, and taking care of your body to improve your quality of life. Do you feel tired, have trouble losing weight, have aches and pains, or just don't feel as good as you'd like to? Improve your health with a customized nutrition program or a safe and effective weight loss plan. Call us today and make the first step in your path to wellness. Illness, loss, abuse, and violence can cause serious trauma. Oftentimes, communities just aren't equipped to help victims and their families. Rise Westmoreland is working to fill that gap. They say Catholic Charities is a key component to overcoming trauma. It began as an ordinary school day, and it was almost over when gunfire erupted this afternoon. Suzanne Dizvonik has seen far too many acts of violence inside schools. It prompted her to begin looking for a public health approach to solving such a heartbreaking problem, but it just wasn't there. That's why she took some time away from her teaching career to develop a training for educators and volunteers to help them recognize, intervene, support, and educate. A trauma would be something that you cannot see. So it would be uh, something that happens at home, um, a divorce, an illness, incarcerated parents, um, any type of abuse would be considered uh, trauma. Dizvonik says counseling provided by organizations like Catholic Charities is pivotal to the emotional healing process after trauma, but oftentimes access to mental health providers is limited. Monsignor Raymond Riffle, managing director of Catholic Charities, says their counseling services are a phone call away. It is a Catholic outreach, but the outreach is targeted to anyone who needs us. And so, regardless of your faith, regardless of your beliefs, uh, you are welcome. Catholic Charities Counseling is available at offices in New Kensington, Katanning, Uniontown, Indiana, and Greensburg. All of our counselors are certified 
mental health specialists. They all have licenses in one of the mental health disciplines, counseling, uh, clinical social work, marriage and family therapy. Dysvonik says resources like that are vital, and she includes that information in what she calls her mental health first aid training. If your child was ill, everybody would be supporting you, but everybody wants to hide the fact that their child might not be thinking the exact same way that we think is normal. So when you uh, bring this into the school setting, what you've done is you've provided an opportunity for everybody to talk and use the same language and to reduce that stigma. Her training, Rise Westmoreland, is now available at dioceseofgreensburg.org under the Youth Protection tab. There you'll also find all the information about Catholic Charities Counseling Centers. I'm Brady DiRico, an intern at the Catholic Accent and a student at St. Vincent College. A coach there made national news for what he did during the Boston Marathon. My race personally didn't go how I wanted to, but th there was a reason that everything unfolded that day. My plan changed pretty quickly from trying to run my best time in a marathon to just finishing the Boston Marathon. I think God had a purpose for me that day. Whenever we hit the final stretch there on Boylston Street, I saw someone in need. I know how much time that I put into training for the race, as everyone did, so I figured if I could just help someone get to that finish line on that day, that would be good. I think. I think many runners would have done what I did. I don't think it was anything special. Um, and that's kind of what I try to instill in my team, just be honest to yourself. And like I said, I learned these lessons at St. Vincent. It's the same thing they're learning. And it's not just for me, it's from in the class, stuff like that. The accent is on the air, online, and in print. Now it's also in the national spotlight. We'll explain coming up. At Cynthia Pro Jester Chiropractic Center, we use technology to analyze a patient's spine. It impulses at a high frequency, low speed into the spine. Here you can see the patient's progress and improvement along the way. We have Westmoreland Live 2 which is oxygen therapy. Inflammation causes 90% of someone's pain. So you're going to see change with low back pain, knees, shoulders, legs, feet. We've been here for 25 years. We're brothers, and we look forward to taking care of your family. In Pennsylvania, there are 14,000 children who have been removed from unsafe situations. While we hope that number stops you in your tracks, we also want to remind you these children are more than a number. There are 14,000 names, stories, fears, hopes, and dreams. They are kids who deserve to know they belong, and the community is here to support them by becoming foster parents. Adelphi Foster Care and Adoption Services is asking for your help to say, I can make a difference. Call us today at 1-800-KID-5928 to learn how. My great-great-grandparents started Rizzo's 84 years ago and we're still here today. Same business, same family, same location. We have our lines of sauce and pasta in the stores, we have a banquet facility, we have a line of chocolates, we have an outdoor wedding venue. It really has become a popular spot for people to get married and have your ceremony and, and your reception. The business really has expanded, but consistent is the tradition and the quality. We're about tradition here at Rizzo's and we invite you to come start a tradition yourself. We're really delighted here in the Diocese of Greensburg because we're marking the one year anniversary of implementing a new strategy to help the church continue its mission of evangelization. And that strategy was wedding together the Office of Communication with the Office of Evangelization. Jesus did not tell us to start a program. He told us to spread the good news. Tonight represents a momentous milestone of which we've been trying to achieve, and that is to bring uh, the Catholic accent to that level of multimedia. In today's world of social media and so many other ways of communication, uh, we have to keep up. The church has to catch up with the rest of the world and be on board and be willing to share the good news more than ever. You know, this is a, such a tremendous announcement, I think, tonight and beginning tonight that we're uh, going uh, more digital than we have been in the past and we're moving beyond just print media. And what we're trying to do is really repair what we think is a digital disconnect. We're creating a deeper understanding of our faith and the tradition so that next-gen Catholics don't just know how, they know the why behind what we do. The people in the Diocese of Greensburg are a tremendous faith-filled, loving people. Uh, I'm blessed to be here as the Bishop of Greensburg. And you can feel the excitement tonight in the room as we uh, made this announcement that we're gonna have a major push to, to tell the message of Jesus and his church. We're very excited too, because in just this short one year period, uh, our Office of Evangelization and Communication has been recognized by a variety of awards for their excellence in the work that they're doing. The office has been recognized and has won awards from the Catholic Press Association, 
they have received a Communicator Award and a telly for this very show that you're watching. So on behalf of the entire Diocese of Greensburg, on behalf of Bishop Molesic and in all of our names, we send a very sincere word of congratulations. Here in the Catholic community of Connellsville, the church finds itself on the front lines of the opioid epidemic. Thank you for uh, giving us the time today. Mary, you have a very personal connection uh, to this issue. So how, how did that motivate your response with the community? Um, well, in December 7th of 2016, my sister passed away from an accidental overdose. And when your loved one is going through that, you want to protect them. Mm -hmm. um, there's a feeling of embarrassment of the family. People are going to judge you or think differently of mm -hmm. you. Almost immediately afterward, um, I just thought we have to do something because now people were coming to me now that they knew mm -hmm. that we had lost someone. And then we wanted to do the practical things that were more than just talking about it, where we can really help most concretely is with family and friends that are struggling with mm -hmm what others are going through. Mm -hmm. Narcotics Anonymous meetings for friends and families are held every Wednesday at St. John the Evangelist Parish in Connellsville from 7 to 8 p.m. downstairs in the social hall. And the second uh, program that we have available is a grief support. The grief support um, is for anyone that has lost someone due, just directly due to an addiction. And we also have um, it available for children as well, because as we know, a lot of children have been mm -hmm. affected. And this is not just the parishioners. This is, uh -uh. you reach out to the community. Mm -hmm. well, I think it, it was important that we wanted to do, you know, both the spiritual, let people know about it. It definitely make it a, something about which we pray continually every week. One of the things is, you know, those on our community prayer list, and we always include addiction in there. When Bishop Molesic launched the diocese in response to the opioid crisis, he made prayer a major component of that response. He wrote to Life and Hope, a prayer that asks for God's grace to help our brothers and sisters suffering from addictions and to help their loved ones. That prayer can be printed directly from our website, theaccentonline.org. And I think that that's one of our strengths and certainly that's something Father Bob has brought into um, this community of faith is just that we need to be Christ's hands and feet, not just here in our parishes, but out into the community. And that support has helped Katrina McGinnis cope with the loss of her son, Tommy, who died at the age of 27. And it's very important to know that your parish community is praying for you and for your loved one. That's the key for me. And people will say, well, what can I do? I'm like, pray for my son, pray for his soul, because mm -hmm. his souls, have, they need prayer. Thank you. Oh, you're quite welcome. Thank you. I know it's a tough day. To watch this show or read more about spiritual health and wellness in the Diocese of Greensburg, visit theaccentonline.org. Thanks for watching.